Hey, good afternoon. Day 33 of the real walk coming to you. Actually taking a little break from work, a little painting, and feel like I have don't not feel know that I have a word that's going to help a lot of you out there. Maybe not for all of you, but this could be a word that applies right now, right to where you're at. And that is what is it, Weldon? What are you putting in the driver's seat? Is your pain at the place of your, is, is that the platform of your life, your pain? Is your drama driving you? Is your emotions taking you left and right and different stuff? Now, the last few days, if I'm gonna be really truthful, wow, man, I've been having some rough days <laughs> and doing film and late at night and different stuff, and I think it's good, and I think there's a place for that. But what the Lord kind of showed me this afternoon was that, you know, that was kind of getting a little bit out of whack. In other words, that was taking a place of idolatry, a worship where I was just all my attention, all my focus was on that. And to the point, it was really just um, giving me a hard time in different areas. And um, I was hearing a little story today about David and um I love and can relate so much to him uh, just because of all his mess ups and different things he does, but his heart just to keep turning back to God and especially his heart to forgive, even when he was wronged greatly because he recognized there was a bigger story at play. And I think sometimes we get so focused on whatever our, our, uh, our offenses, our pain, and that might be, we might be, have a justification to feel the way we do in different stuff. But if we just keep that so narrow, just in on us, that can go to a place of offense, that can go to a place that actually begins to hinder us in our walk from the Lord and hinder us and what others need for you. See, there's other people in, in my life, in your life, who need you. But if we're allowing things to be disproportionate, whether it's our pain, offense, a relationship, whatever that is, that can really deter us and have a negative impact on around us. And, you know, for me, it's my four children. I have four under 13. Uh, I have Jeremiah, who's 13. Uh, John Michael, who's 11, Jaden, who's nine, and our little caboose, Caitlin, who's six. And if I'm being consumed by different areas with that, when I'm with them or when I'm around them, I'm not going to be able to give my fullness to them. So I want to share a little story about King David. And he had a son, Absalom, and basically his son revolted against David. He wanted to take David out. He was going to kill his own father and try to take the kingdom from him. And he began to manipulate the other people and, and influence them to come on his side and say, hey, David's old, he's a wash up, uh, I'm God's anointed man. But he, he was never battle tested, he was never out there. He, he was just a talking mouth and um, it created great division in the kingdom and a great place of pain for David. You know, looking over the life of David and some of the dysfunction in his children, different things that have happened, I can only imagine when that was going on, the pain that must have caused David, the distress, the shame uh, in that. And so it comes to a, a, like a, a tipping point. And David sends out these men to go fight against Absalom. And he says, don't, but don't kill him. And they were fighting and his, his chief general actually kills Absalom. And that, that revolt is defeated. These men put their hearts, their lives, their families on the line for King David. And if they didn't win, they were gone. Absalom was going to take them out. And when David heard the news that his son had been killed in war, even though it was a great victory, he lost it. And listen, this is not about, you know, uh, how do we grieve loss and different stuff. There's a place and a time uh, and a way to do that. Uh, and so the, the war was... A ways out but as the men and the army came back in they said the the messengers went out to him and said have you heard yeah man we got a great victory no king david is just completely distraught he's just wrecked because his son is dead and that would be something that wrecked us i can only imagine what was going through david's heart 
And so the men who had won this victory actually just kind of went to their homes and they felt ashamed for doing what they did. Now, uh, David's commander went to him and said, Look, what are you doing? What are you doing, these men? If you, don't, if you don't change what you're doing right now, these men are going to turn on you. You're going to lose the kingdom. You're going to lose the place of influence you have as a leader. And whether that's just a leader in our home, to ourselves, or those around us, if we get so caught up in our pain, and some of it's right, and it's okay to grieve and go past that, but we know when we take it over the line and we place it in a place of idolatry, we place it in a place of serving our emotions, we get driven by it, we're consumed on the inside. Especially I find those kind of things can get stirred up over Christmas. It's like we get enlisted by entitlement mentality. Well, I should have this kind of Christmas or this shouldn't have happened or that shouldn't have happened. And listen, it's okay to feel those things. It's okay to process those things. What I'm talking to you about today is not don't enthrone them. And as always, you know, it's coming back. Last time I did a video on trusting in his character. Almost in every natural area I look like, and, I, and not, playing, not playing the victim, tired of playing the victim, not going to play the victim, but financially, uh, emotionally, uh, uh, my living situation. I mean, I can just break down right now and start thinking about that. But you know what? I can't enthrone it. I can't say this is bigger than God. I can't say this is bigger than his love for me. That this is bigger than his plan for me. Because God's faithful to finish this work. He started it. And we can just rest in his character. I can take that pain and I can put it back at the place of the cross. I can recognize there's a bigger story. Jesus, when he faced the cross, he was able to look through to the bigger story of you and me. And we have to look past our little area here and expand and recognize this as you see out behind me. There's a much larger story at play. And it's a story of redemption. It's a story of restoration. It's a story of a father who loves his children and wants to see them completely restored. And I always say this, God is good and he does only good. Well, then you don't see my life. You don't know what's happening right now. If it's not good, he's not finished. Well, I don't see how this is going to work. Neither do I. But you know what? We have to come back to a place of trust, to a place of worship where we give him the place of preeminence, where we continue to go, Lord, I just give you my heart. Remember I used to do that? and did that in one video. What are you doing? I'm taking my heart and say, God, I give it to you. I don't know. I don't know how this works. I don't know this. I'm in hurting. I'm in pain. But you know what? That is not going to enthrone my heart. It's not going to be a place of idolatry. Let's pray. Father, I just thank you for this day, for those who are watching, especially in this couple of days right before Christmas or day before Christmas Eve who might be stirred up, who might be being consumed by different areas, situations, addictions, relational stuff, different things. I pray for a place of repentance, a place to turn back to you and recognize it's not in our own strength, that we can't carry it, Lord. But as we turn to you, Lord, you give us rest. Lord, your word says in quietness and confidence can be our strength. I just speak that over you today. Speak life, speak peace, and declare the sovereign hand of the Lord over your life. And it's easy. Guys, this is so easy. We don't have to make it complicated. The gospel is very simple. I surrender, Lord. I can't do it, Lord. It's in you and where you lead, where you direct, and I will be obedient. Hey, God bless. Have a great day today and a great night. Keep watching. Day 33 in the books. We'll see you tomorrow. I'll have my kiddos. God loves you. Has a great plan for your life. Trust him.